Hey guys, what's up? Sorry about missing last week's upload, but you know how it is. If I didn't have anything good to review, I didn't want to make a video because it would have just been, you know, bloated padding for the sake of it. And if I'm going to review something, I want it to be worth your time. So I hope having two reviews up this weekend will work for you instead. Since I had two videos to make this week, I wanted to go with something light and fun for the first one so that we could get into the heavy seriousness of the second one, which is going to be Godzilla Minus One. I saw a bunch of clips on Twitter and figured I could, you know, hop onto a trend. And, uh, apparently, the new Ted show is alright. Which one's that? Oh, it's the one where, uh, the rugby team crashes in the Andes in the 70s, and they ran out of food so they had to eat each other. You're kidding. No? It's a true story. Like, like, eat each other alive? Like they're trading? Like you give me your hand, I give you my foot? No, no, it's like some of the guys died in the crash, and then the ones that survived had to eat the dead guys. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. Me neither, man. Plus, it's all dudes, so it's even worse. Yeah, what? At least, it's better than it has any right to be. I haven't seen the Ted movies, which this show is a prequel for. As far as I can tell, you don't need to watch them to understand the show as well. It's standalone, a light little sitcom with seven episodes. It has a weird amount of heart in it, like genuinely caring about its characters and using absurd setups to cause the humor instead of just bullying the comic relief. I've definitely met people like Maddie, Suze, and Blair in real life. There's a sort of old school charm in it and it's definitely leaning on the 90s nostalgia as part of the show. There's an episode about renting porn from a video store and playing it on a VCR. I have to say, my favorite episode was the one where John and Ted try to prank their school bully, Clive, who doesn't have a dad. To mess with his head, they pretend to be his dad and call him on the phone and get him to humiliate himself. However, after Clive tells him about an upcoming math test, Ted and John get really into helping Clive succeed and encourage him to keep trying his best. They throw him a surprise birthday party and get an actor to play his dad in real life. However, Clive's mom shows up and calls their bluff, making Clive angry at John and Ted. But then, instead of devolving into a fight scene, John, Ted, and Clive end up hugging it out. This cartoonishly surreal version of real life is really fun to me, and it gives it a lot of unique punchlines. There's the pee shy joke that kind of got popular on Twitter. All right, there's another guy in here, and I'm pee shy. Jesus Christ. Hey, dude, do you mind? My buddy's self-conscious. Yeah, I thought he might be having some trouble when I didn't hear anything. I just want you to know. You take all the time you need to. I won't judge. Oh, there we go. Thank you. That is all the thanks I need. But then there's also stuff like this scene, where Blair and Ted go to Blair's professor's house after a party and Ted gets propositioned instead of Blair. There's nothing profound or interesting here, no deep themes. If you want to throw something on in the background to watch, then here it is. The only thing I don't like is any time they try to mention stuff about the future, like calling forward to future culture war arguments in the first episode, or referencing cell phones in the porn episode. Every one of those jokes feel cringe, and I hope they don't keep doing them, or at least keep them to a minimum as much as possible. Also, Ted himself is just kind of cute. The animation for him is pretty good, and there are shots where they take advantage of what he is just so they can push the physical humor in there. I'm gonna take a moment to step out and pitch some strays towards Has Been Hotel, which has started getting a lot of criticism on social media as the show was picked up by Amazon. A big critique of Has Been Hotel is that the characters swear a lot without it being funny or having any purpose. On. So I was playing this gig, and for some fucking reason this virtue chick was digging on the drummer, and it's like, do you know who I am? I'm fucking Adam. I'm the original dick. All dicks descend from me. Meanwhile, this show, Ted, has lots of swears in it, but it doesn't feel forced and the jokes still land. Swearing can be a big part of a character's identity. It can ground them in the world and give meaning to their struggles. What swears they use or don't use can easily be part of their background and gives unspoken exposition about a character. It's showing instead of telling if it's used correctly. Having these characters in Ted say meaningful lines that are intercut with swears tells us more about them than Hasbin Hotel has managed to scrape together with their lines, which are written with swears that tell us nothing about the characters. Another example of this is Yahtzee Croshaw's Jack McKeown novels, 
where all the swear words were replaced with math terms for censorship reasons. It's both a meta joke and a state of commentary on the world inside the books. The math-based swearing is funny, but it's also an important part of the characters who choose to swear that way. In the second book, we're even introduced to biker gangs who have made up their own swearing system and have clashed with the star pilots because their pilot math caught on and the biker's swearing system did not. Something like Ted that stays grounded in the real world is only going to be able to use real world 90 squares, while has been could easily use fantastical made up hell squares to be more interesting and provide characterization. A real missed opportunity here, honestly, but oh well. This one's a little short, so while I've got you here, there's another comedy I want to talk about. The movie I was supposed to see last week was Godzilla Minus One, but I ended up accidentally seeing Mean Girls instead, because I'm an idiot and went into the wrong theater. I never would have seen this movie if I was by myself, but it's funny enough watching it with a friend that, you know, we stuck around and watched it. I don't have a lot to say about it, so I'm just gonna put these reviews, like, together here. I never saw the original Mean Girls, but the main character of this one, the 2024 movie, was instantly relatable to me as a girl who was homeschooled and went by the name Katie, briefly. But as someone who used to go by Katie, uh, no one on the planet has ever fucked up that name, especially to the word Caddy, which, uh, isn't a name. Yeah, I understand that calling her Caddy is thematic to her being a bigger piece of shit than Regina, but it's just very weird. They could have just had someone call her that as an insult instead of having people, like, actually mistake her name for Caddy. I like musicals, so to me, having it cut to pop musical numbers instead of exposition was really satisfying. The movie bounced seamlessly between characters and music in a way that was really satisfying to watch. It was a chick flick silly comedy, but it was like a perfectly executed one. A platonic ideal of comedy musical chick flicks. Every chick flick I've ever seen is trying to be this movie. To have characters this bombastic, to have music this catchy, to have arcs and characters that I actually care about. My absolute favorite character is Damien. He stole the show in every single scene he was in. His acting skills were absolutely on point. Every one of his lines were incredible, the kind of thing where you wished he were a more important character so he had more screen time. Seeing Katie get dragged down to Regina's level in a quest for petty revenge was exactly what I expected, but it was still fun to watch. If you have a group of friends and you just want to see a movie, any movie, and don't really care, this is that movie. It's fuzzy and feel good and paint by the numbers, but everything that was painted is meticulously kept between the lines, and it's fun. If you're trying to find commentary on the human condition from either Mean Girls 2024 or Ted, you're not gonna find it. But if you need something to turn on as background noise while you live your life, you could go a lot worse. I would recommend these as time fillers, uh, but I wouldn't dedicate your life to either of these comedies. Anyway, I'll get back on schedule with a video next weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a good night.